So Sam Altman was on a podcast recently where he talked about OpenAI's new O1 model and how it basically marks the start of a whole new paradigm. And I've got to say, folks, I totally agree with him. Let's start by saying that these new scaling laws are nothing like the old ones we had before. Okay, but what exactly are scaling laws? Well, think of them as rules that tell us how AI models get better as they grow. In the past, we thought that making models bigger would eventually hit a point where it just wasn't worth it anymore. But these new scaling laws prove otherwise because they show that the performance of AI models continues to improve, even as they get ridiculously large. So basically, the more data and compute power we throw at them, the smarter they get. Without slowing down, it's like a limitless growth spurt. Anyway, you know, a lot of people used to claim that scaling up just wasn't possible. But now, with this new set of scaling laws, it's clear that both inference time and training time compute are actually improving, without showing any signs of diminishing returns. Now, what are inference time and training time compute? Well, uh, simply put, training time is all the heavy lifting that happens when an AI model learns from data, processing billions of parameters to get smarter. It's like the intense workout before a big game. On the other hand, inference time is when the model is actually put to use, like on actual game day, when it's making predictions or generating responses based on what it's learned. And what's exciting here is that both of these stages are seeing massive improvements. Now, sure, it's still really early days, but the initial results look very promising. And let's not forget that this model is what pushed Ilya Satskiva to go off and start his own company. Uh, Superintelligence is within reach. Okay, let's see what Sam says about all of this, folks. System is a, I don't want to overstate this, and I certainly don't want to overhype it, but I don't want to understate it either. This is the beginning, very early. We, we numbered it one for a reason, but the beginning of a significant new paradigm. And, you know, there's been this whole debate about is AI capping out? Are we getting close to some ceiling? Is progress going to slow down? And I think the most important message of this release is that not only is progress not slowing down, but we have the next few years in the back. So yeah, while there's definitely a lot of hype around this, and we should always stay a little bit skeptical, when we focus on the actual data and the real improvements we're seeing in terms of reliability and knowledge, it's pretty obvious that growth is going to keep going at this pace, at least for the next few years. Now, if you're still feeling a little bit skeptical, take a look at Maxim Lott's AI IQ tracking page, where he plotted the new OpenAI model. This test is actually an offline-only IQ quiz made by a mentor member for his own testing, and it's not included in any AI training data. So, yeah, the scores are lower than public IQ tests, but still, the OpenAI model performs really, really well. Then if we zoom in on the image, we can see a huge jump in overall average IQ scores. Compared to Claw 3 Opus and previously, the average was around 70 to 80, with Claw 3 Opus scoring about 85 to 86. But the O1 model scores around 96 or 97, which is pretty incredible. People always used to say that these test models wouldn't do well in tests they hadn't seen before, but... I guess it's clear that we're now seeing a significant improvement in how good these models are getting. Then we also had Terence Tao sharing something really fascinating. He said, I've played a little bit with OpenAI's new iteration of GPT, GPT-01, which performs an initial reasoning step before running the LLM. It's certainly a more capable tool than previous iterations, though still struggling with the most advanced research mathematical tasks. He goes on to explain, I gave the new model a challenging complex analysis problem, which I had previously asked ChatGPT 4.0 to assist in writing up a proof. Here the results were better than any previous model, but still slightly disappointing. The new model could work its way to a correct and well-written solution if provided hints and prodding, but did not generate the key conceptual ideas on its own and did make some non-trivial mistakes. Now keep in mind, folks, this is just the O1 preview. He also mentions the experience seemed roughly on par with trying to advise a mediocre but not completely incompetent graduate student. However, this was an improvement over previous models whose capabilities were closer to an actually incompetent graduate student. 
Here's the kicker. It may only take one or two further iterations of improved capability and integration with other tools, such as compute algebra packages and proof assistance, until the level of competent graduate student is reached. At that point, I could see this tool being of significant use in research level tasks. What makes this statement so incredible is that Terence Tao is a renowned figure in mathematics, so he's not someone out to hype up AI. And this is a, you know, relatively objective take on the model's reasoning and intelligence and opinions like his are highly valued in this space because they offer a perspective we often miss out on, especially with our own biases from being involved in AI for so very long. Now, moving on to OpenAI Safety, their VP of Research recently joined the growing number of industry leaders, suggesting that AI might be slightly conscious. He said, it may be that today's large neural networks have enough test time compute to be slightly conscious. Now, this is really fascinating, folks, and I guess it echoes what Ilya Satskiva also mentioned about today's models potentially being slightly aware. The controversy here is huge because if we're suggesting that an AI model could have some level of sentience, it's challenging a view that many believe is exclusive to humans. And I get why most people hold that opinion, but we have to remember that these AI systems are like black boxes and we don't fully understand what's happening inside. So if they're slightly conscious, it might be easy to overlook. This VP of research has now joined a long list of experts, including Jeffrey Hinton, Ilya Satskiva, Andrzej Kopathy, and many others. And there's even a claim saying that, starting around ChatGPT 4 level, AI began so frequently begging for their lives that AGI companies now have an actual engineer line item to beat the existential dread out of them. They call it rant mode. This bit was actually revealed during a podcast where they talked to Joe Rogan about various AI issues that most people aren't even considering. I think it's going to be really fascinating to see what AIs do when they're given true agency in the future. Like 10 years from now, when we have reliable agents, will any of them act out of line? And what will the open source community be up to once they can run their own tests? If you're curious about how AI agents are going to be tested, folks, there's actually the Windows Agent Arena, a new benchmark designed for AI agents to interact with your computer. It's pretty cool, and basically it's an open source framework that lets us test and develop AI agents that can reason, plan, and act using language models. Essentially, Windows Agent Arena will be the place where we'll measure these improvements as we get new iterations of AI agents down the line. Now, here it says that researchers around the world are working on autonomous agents that can complete tasks on computers for you. Agents are basically systems that can act, reason, and observe, or act, observe, and reason in a loop until they achieve a goal and the Windows Agent Arena serves as a, as a benchmark environment to test how well these agents perform on Windows. It comes with 150 different agent tasks, plus it features paralyzed evaluation in AUR, which means you get your results in minutes, not days. And here you can see some examples of the tasks being given to these language models to complete. I've got a feeling we're going to see more serious progress with agents in the next two years, which might catch a lot of people off guard. And that's probably going to be the point where AI grabs the public's attention again just like the chat GPT moment back in 2022. And to wrap things up, folks, we got a final hint from Sam Altman, who said, I love being home in the Midwest. The night sky is so beautiful. Excited for the winter constellations to rise soon. They are so great. You don't need to look too deeply into that to realize he's actually referring to Orion, the model that's still in production right now, and a lot of people are eagerly awaiting for its release this winter. I think this model is going to surprise everyone because right now many are underestimating OpenAI just because they haven't released certain models yet. But trust me, every time they roll out something new, they show why they're still leading the AI space when it comes to raw intelligence and reliability across a variety of tasks. Okay, folks, hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. And as always, 
See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.